Praise God. Amen. 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 Amen and amen. Our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Our response is hallelujah. Praise Glory. God. Amen. 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 Without much um, waste of time, it is time for the word. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Uh, Jesus is about to sow the word in our spirit. Are we ready to receive it? Yes. yes. Amen. We are ready. We are ready for the engrafted word of God that never changes. The word that Amen. brings light to every dark situation. The word that speaks Amen. light in every path. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. With a clap offering, let's welcome our senior pastors to bring us the word. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Our God is good. All the time. And all the time. My God. Hallelujah. Just before we proceed, let's just take a moment to thank God for his word. Let's thank God for the release of his spirit, the fullness of his spirit, uh, that the word will become flesh in your life, that you will have an encounter with the word in the name of Jesus, that the full anointing upon the word will come alive tonight and after tonight your life will be shifted into a higher dimensions in the name of jesus open your mouth and begin to thank him thank you for the word father we thank you for the word holy spirit we welcome your word will speak into our lives your word will change our lives lord your word will change our association holy spirit we welcome you your word of oh, the light comes to our path. We thank you for clarity. We thank you for direction. We thank you, oh God, that you speak into our hearts, oh God, and change us. And transform us, oh God, into being the one that you see in the spirit of the living God. Release the fullness of your dimension, the fullness of your power, the fullness of your spirit upon us tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we have. Pray. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you one more time for such a time as this. We ask Holy Spirit that you breathe upon your word. Do a new thing in our lives. Let us not become hearers of your word only, but doers of your word in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, uh, we want to thank God for those powerful testimonies of uh, salvation and celebration of marriages, marriage anniversary to God alone be all the glory for the great things he continues to do in our midst. He is the doer of all of this, and we thank God for what he's doing in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Are, you, are you ready for the word? Yes. Well, as you are aware, by God's grace, next week, starting next week, Thursday, uh, by God's grace, our midweek services are going to services. So uh, this will be from next week, our first service, and then our second service will start at 7.30. Our first service starts at 6.30 and finish at 7.25. And then our second service starts at 7.30 and finishes at 8.30. So let's be trusting God for an encounter because I believe that God is going to do what only he can do in our midst in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. Turn with me, please, in your Bibles to the book of James chapter 1. Sorry, James chapter 2, verse 26. James chapter 2, verse 26. I read, it says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. I read it again. It says, For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also also and we are blessed by the reading of God's word. I'm starting a new teaching that I have titled, uh, I, I finish it next week uh, in the two services that I have titled, How to Have a Successful Year. 
how to have a successful year. I believe that at the beginning of every year, the hard desire of everyone is to be successful in the year. Uh, it's very interesting today, I picked up my son from school and uh, he was telling me about his new year resolution. Uh, he was telling me about his resolution for the new year. Uh, he said uh, one of his new year resolution is he wants to, he wants to run every day he wants to go running every day. I said, <laughs> I said to him, but you're already fit. You don't need to go running every day. Uh, and then what else? Yeah, he said, my second New Year resolution is I want to stop eating sweets. Uh, my third New Year resolution is I want to eat a lot of apple, one apple a day. And my fourth New Year resolution is to is to study hard and be, become very successful. So think about it at his age, he's already thinking and talking about new year resolutions. And I said to him, uh, you don't need to go jogging every day because you're already fit. Uh, and I said, so the new year resolution that you have to stick to is the no sugar, no sweets, that's a good one. And then he was telling me about how some of his friends have already broken their new year resolution. And today is day six already. And so uh, at the beginning of the year, many people have new year resolutions. They write down their vision. They write down their goals, what they want to achieve in the year. But they have forgotten that there's a pathway to be able to achieve these goals. And so the scripture we read says, uh, as the body, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Faith without works is dead also. So if you're going to have a successful year, that means faith and works must go hand in hand. Faith and works must go hand in hand. Remember that Faith without works is what? Dead. Faith without works is dead. So if you say you have faith for something this year, you must have a corresponding action in proportion to that level of faith. Very important. Romans chapter 8, verse 19, the Bible says, for the endless expectation of the creator wait for the manifestation of the sons of God. You see, therefore, that means that for the year, for us to be a successful year, we have to do something. There is always what you must do to receive the fullness of God's blessing. As a matter of fact, there is no blessing in scripture that doesn't have what you must do to obtain it, including salvation. There is something you must do to receive what God has for you. If I want to give you a, 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 a water right now, you need a cup or a glass to receive the water. There is always something you must do. So the question we want to ask, write this question down. What must I do to have a successful year? What must I do to have a successful year? Luke chapter 18 from verse 18 to 23. We want to look at a classical case study of someone who was willing to receive something but not willing to pay the price. And as a result of that, he failed at what he was asking for. Luke chapter 18 from verse 18 to 23. The Bible says, and now a certain ruler asked him, ask who Jesus, saying, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? I want you to underline the word a certain ruler. So that means this man is not an ordinary man. You can never become a ruler without doing something. 
So that means throughout his entire lifetime, he has done something. He has paid the price. He has, he has gone through all the stages to become a ruler. But now, in as much as he's a ruler, there is one thing missing in his life. There is one thing missing in his life. So he comes to the one who has that one thing to have access to that one thing. So he said, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So notice something. He is a ruler, but he doesn't have eternal life. So that means he has everything else, but he doesn't have one thing. He doesn't have eternal life. And Jesus said, what shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? That's why for us in this commission, your salvation, your family's salvation, your friend's salvation, your colleague's salvation, your relative's salvation, your neighbor's salvation are very important. That's why we are going to be praying for the salvation of everyone around us this year in the name of Jesus. And this yeah. is not the year to backslide. Hallelujah. We have come too far to backslide. Glory be to God. We have come yeah. what? Amen. Too far to backslide. So this ruler said, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? So Jesus said to him, verse 19, why do you call me good? No one is good but one, and that one is God. And Jesus went further and said, you know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And he said, the ruler is responding to Jesus. And he said, all these things I have kept from my youth. So you see, that means he understands the principle of faith without works is dead. He understands the fact that to attain something, you have to do something. So Jesus listed the things that he must do. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor your father and your mother. And his response to all the lists Jesus gave him is that all these things I have kept from my youth. All these things I have kept from my, from my youth. Verse 22, Jesus said, so when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, you still lack one thing. And what's that one thing? He says, sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. So Jesus recognized what this man lacked, this ruler lacked. In other, in other uh, uh, books, he's called the rich young ruler. So he's rich, he has everything, he has life, he is blessed, he has everything. He's fulfilled all the Ten Commandments. He's lived it from his youth. And hence, he's become rich and successful and a ruler. But Jesus looked at him and said, there is still one thing that you lack. This is very important. The day you get to the point where you think you lack nothing, where you think you know it all, pride and arrogance has entered into your life. The day where you think that you know it all, you don't lack anything. I don't need anyone. I don't need God. I don't need this church. I don't need these people. I don't need my husband. I don't need my wife. I don't need my children. I don't need anyone. Then you are on the road, on the path to destruction. Jesus looked at him eyeball to eyeball, right in the face and said, yes, I admit that you have kept all of these things from your youth, 
but there is one thing that you lack. There is one thing that you still lack. And what is that one thing? Listen to Jesus. Jesus said to him, sell all that you have and distribute to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. Look at the instruction. Now, what was he looking for? How to what? Inherit eternal life. And so Jesus gave him a list of things he must do to inherit eternal life. And he said to Jesus from the first onset, I have done all of this. I have, I have honored my, my mother and father. I have not committed adultery. I have not bear false witness. I have not stolen from anyone. And Jesus said, there's one thing you still lack. What is that one thing? Go, sell everything that you have. Not something. Jesus said, sell how many things? Sell everything. Now, the test here is that the things that you have should not own you. The day money owns you, you cannot do anything for God. Money must not own you. Material things must not own you. Are you following me? Material things must not control you. So Jesus said, sell everything that you have, go and distribute them to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And then what do you do? Come, follow me. Look at verse 23 of Luke chapter 18. The Bible says that, but when he heard the rich young ruler, when he heard this, he became very sorrowful, for he was what? Very rich. He became what? Very sorrowful. He became what? Very sorrowful, for he was very rich. That means he couldn't fulfill the tenets of this instruction. But remember, in his entire lifetime, he has done other things to get to the level where he is. But to inherit eternal life, Jesus said, this one thing you must do. The world cannot have possession of you. And after that instruction, he became sorrowful. He became very sad. And the Bible says that he left without receiving or inheriting eternal life. What am I saying? If you are going to have a successful year, there is a price you have to pay for. Like my son was saying, his new year resolution is to run every day. I said, are you sure you can run every day? When it's snowing, can you run every day? To be able to share that weight, not for him, but probably for some of us and many others, you have to pay the price when it's snowing, it's freezing to go running in the cold to get up from your warm bed, to get up from your nice and cozy house and hit the road. That is a price you have to pay. Are you following me? Why? Because faith without works is dead. There are too many Christians who go around confessing, professing their faith, but they don't have works. They claim they have faith, but they don't have works. Now, a proof of your faith is your works. You say, how, oh, pastor? Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Did you see that? Things hoped for. The substance of things hoped for. So that means your level of faith determines your level of things. Small faith, small things in your life. 
middle faith, medium faith, middle or medium things in your life. Big faith, big things in your life. Great faith, great things in your life. When we started this commission uh, 13 years ago, I didn't have faith to be able to buy some of the things we are using today. I didn't have that faith. I didn't have that faith. But you see, faith grows. Do you understand? Faith grows. And the only way your faith is going to grow is when you feed your faith. So therefore, Romans chapter 10, verse 17 says, so then faith comes by hearing and the continuous hearing of the word of God. That is how faith comes. Your faith will not be built up this year if you neglect the hearing of the word. So if you want great things in your life this year, and don't get me wrong, having things, there is nothing wrong with having things. This wrong, rich young ruler allowed the things to take possession of him. The things became first place in his life. In all humility, there is nothing in my life today that I cannot hand over to God if he demands it today. Things must not hold you, must not control you. You must control things. Wealth must not control you. You must control wealth. How do you control wealth? By honoring God with the 10% of all your increase every month or every week. And that's the only way God will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing for you. Hallelujah. Amen. And so there is something you must do. There is something you must do this year. Whatever area it is, make a list of that area and start doing something in that area to make that area successful. There is always something you must do. Beloved, there is always something you must do. There is no future for idle, idlers in the kingdom of God. There is no future for those who sit on the wall in the kingdom of God. If you are going to be successful this year, as much as God wants you to be successful, there are things in his word that you must subscribe to to be able to make your life successful, your spiritual life successful. Hallelujah. Amen. So quickly, as we get ready to close, there are eight things you must do this year. There are eight things you must do this year to make this year successful. Eight things. Simple. If you can do these eight things, you will be successful in every area of your life. And what are they? Number one, you must seek God first. Number one, you must seek God first. Please hear me. Let God be number one in your life this year. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the things that the world is chasing will come chasing after you. And we know the list of things that Jesus spoke about. He said, the best of the air, look at them. They neither toil, they don't work, yet your heavenly father knows how to take care of them. They don't have to go to work nine to five or five to nine or 10 p.m. to 5 a.m., work long shifts, long hours, yet your heavenly father knows how to take care of them. So put God first. Put God first. Let God be number one in your life this year. I've said this and I'll continue to say it. 
until what is important to God becomes important to you, what is important to you will never be important to God. Why do you think putting God second, he will put you first? <laughs> why do you think if God is position number two in your life, why do you want him to put you position number one in his life? Do you think God will do that? The scriptures are clear. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7. It says, be not deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man or a woman sows, that shall he also reap. So if you are sowing second place into God, you cannot reap their first place in God. Are you getting what I'm saying? If you're a student and you are being lazy, playing games, watching cartoons, being on your phones all night, all day, all night, you are tired. You wake up in the morning, tired, going to school. You are in class and sleeping. You cannot be an outstanding student. It's not possible. It's not magic. Do you understand? You will always reap in life what you sow. We had a testimony tonight of precious couples celebrating 21 years in marriage. It didn't just happen. I'm sure they've been sowing some love. I'm sure they've been sowing some love into each other. Hence, they have reaped 21 years. If they were sowing hatred into each other, they wouldn't be here now testifying to God that they are 21 years today. It's, it's not done. Please hear me. If you put God second place in your life, God cannot put you first place in his life. Seek first the kingdom of God. That is the greatest jackpot in life. All my life I've been seeking God first. My family is not even number one in my life. I am not number one in my life. My wife is not number one in my life. God is number one in my life. Everything I do, number one. When I gave my life to Christ, I was walking over an hour to church. That's seeking God first. That's seeking first his kingdom. I didn't have the means to go to church, to, to pay for, for transportation to go to church. So I was walking to church. As I've grown in the things of God, there's been times, I mean, I, I mean, we were driving when my wife and I were caught in, we were driving probably over four hours to, to uh, Cardiff to go and support a friend's church, not our church. Going, driving all the way. He was not paying us anything. When we go, we'll go on a Saturday, go for an outreach to help bring people into the church Sunday. After we finish Sunday, we drive back to London to have our service in the evening. Sometimes we get stuck in traffic. And all these years of seeking God first, seeking God first, seeking God first, God has always placed me first on his calendar. God Amen. has always placed me first on his agenda. My heart desire Amen. is to see God's people blessed. That's, I mean, I don't remember the last time I had a prayer point for myself. Every day when I wake up, God bless them. God increase them. This year is our year of manifestation. Let them experience manifestation of your harvest, of blessing, of breakthrough, of promotion, of increase in every area of their life. That's my prayer daily. That's my prayer daily. A few years ago, our son was challenged at the verge of death in the hospital. I was out on the street handing out flyers. My wife said to me, are you praying for us? Did you know mm -hmm. that I never thought about it? 
I didn't pray for him. When they were in the hospital, I knew that as I take care of God, I seek first the kingdom of God, uh, that which concerns me is, is, is nothing. So this year, if you are going to have a successful year, seek God first. And by the grace of God, God brought him out of the hospital. God Amen. brought him out. Amen. God healed him completely. Glory be to God. What am I saying to you? These things that I'm teaching you, they are very simple. They are very basic, but they work. They work like wildfire. Listen, God is so simple that sometimes many people miss it. You want me to say, okay, take an oil, pour, pour, pour uh, salt in it, uh, uh, and then, and then the holy, holy water, holy water, holy water. I brought this water from Israel. I brought this water from Jamaica. Is is the is from the Jordan? And that's when you <laughs> believe. No, God <laughs> is so simple that most of the time, many people miss God. I pray for you that you will not miss God this year. Amen. Say a good amen. 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 I pray for you that this year you will not miss God. Amen. Receive the grace to seek God first this year. Amen. Receive the grace. Receive the unmerited grace of God to put God first this year in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I pray for you that as you put God first, God will put you first in every area of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Listen, the secret to ending all forms of struggle is putting God first. So put God first this year and see God do exploits in your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Did you receive it today? Amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Before we close, I want us to pray. I want you to pray and ask God to give you grace. There are eight things. One of them is seek God first. Ask God to give you the grace to seek him first. Ask God to make this year successful for you. Listen, we don't have time to waste. Ask God to make this year the most successful year ever in your life. Now open Open your mouth and begin to prophesy into the year. Prophesy into the year. Prophesy into 2022. Prophesy now. Open your mouth and prophesy. We prophesy into the year. We decree that this year will be awesome. It will be successful. In the mighty name of Jesus, we prophesy. We prophesy. Harvest upon harvest. We prophesy. Increase upon increase. I prophesy manifestation of the glory of God in every sense, in every meeting, in the name of Jesus, the fullness of the Spirit. I prophesy it. I decree it. Manifestation of greatness, manifestation of power, manifestation of healing, manifestation of harvest of souls. I prophesy it into this commission. Every time we gather, I decree. Three, that will become our portion. Multitude, multitude, multitude. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. I call it down in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Now, before we close, I would like to pray for you. If you are sick in any part of your body, put your hand there. Or if you know someone who is sick in anywhere, you are believing God for their healing, put, the, put your hand where you know they are healing, they are believing God for healing. And I'm going to pray for you. And then if you are not sick in any part of your body, just put your hand on your head. 
Sometimes you don't know what is the devil is planting in, in within you, but this year shall not be so. So therefore, in the name of Jesus, Father, I minister the fullness of the Spirit unto your people right now. Everyone watching from across the world, let the same power, the same healing power that was upon Jesus, let it flow through this service. So everyone across the world, let them be healed instantly. Father, I vow to give you all the glory. I thank you. I call it done. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 It is done in the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe God has healed you. You will testify in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, we've come to the end of our service. We thank God for what he's doing. Please remember this Sunday we are back to our in-person service. It's the beginning of the new year. I don't miss the service wherever you are, whether far or near, drive down. God has given me a word this year. It's going to be very simple, very practical teaching, but with the backing of the fullness of the Spirit of God. Jesus said, uh, the words that I speak to you, they, they are spirit and they are life. So this year, we are pressing on into the manifestation of the word and the spirit. And the combination of that will bring about manifestation. Amen. Amen. So don't come alone this Sunday. Invite someone and I believe that you'll be blessed in the name of Jesus. Remember next week, next week, Thursday, our online service is now going to be two services. First service finish at 7.25. Second service starts at 7.30. And it's one hour service. We're going to discipline ourselves, stay within the hour and God will do exploits and his name will be glorified in Jesus' name. And when you are coming, don't come alone. Whether on Zoom or on online, always invite someone. Hallelujah. Remember, Amen. that's part of seeking first the kingdom of God. When you seek God first, what concerns you will concern God in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Get ready for major testimonies this Sunday. Amen. Amen. Get ready for major testimonies this Sunday. Mama Eunice, I see you having major testimonies this Amen. month. Amen. Major Amen. testimonies this Amen. month. Amen. Get ready. Amen. Get ready. Major testimonies. Amen. Testimonies you have never seen before. In the Amen. name of Jesus. Curtis, I see God giving you major testimonies this week. Yes, this week. This month. Be ready. Amen. Be ready. God has opened the portals for you. Let your heart be right with God. God says, make a vow. Make a vow, make a vow, because God is about to shame those who has ridiculed you in the past. God is about to shame all those who have ridiculed you in the past. This year, God will crown you with his glory. Get Amen. ready. There will be an explosion of wealth, explosion of wealth, explosion of wealth. In your life, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Peter, God wants you to be serious with him this year. Be serious with him this year. Take your love for God to the next level. God says you must go back to the first love. Go back to the first love. Go back to the first love. That's what God is saying. So it's time as you go back to the first God says stop worrying. Stop worrying how he's going to take care of your needs. He says, put him first and all your needs will be taken care of in the name of Jesus. Shiro, Shiro, God says this year, he is going to crown you with glory. God is going to crown you with glory. God is going to crown you with glory. Every shame that has followed you up until now, God is wiping it away. God is going to crown you with his glory. This year, God will put laughter, 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 laughter. Every month of this year, God will put laughter in your mouth. 
in the name you laugh this year you will laugh this year God will make this impossible possible in the name of Jesus I minister the grace of God to all of you right now I minister the grace of God to all of you right now in the name of Jesus grace upon grace grace upon grace grace upon grace what has been impossible God is going to make it possible for you in the name of Jesus, Amen. I declare it Amen. so, and so shall it be in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. 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 Did you receive it tonight? Yes. Amen. Let's give Jesus some praise. Amen. Let's give Jesus Amen. some praise. Amen. Oh, Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We give you all the honor. We give yes, you all yes. the glory in Jesus' yes, name. Amen. 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 Let's Amen. share the grace. May the May grace the of, our Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ the Lord of God, God, the, Lord the sweet fellowship, fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with, with us now, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, Amen. goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. And, and we shall dwell in the hearts of the Lord, the Lord ever. 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 Amen. 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 God bless you. Congratulations. Amen. Happy New Year. Amen. 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 Amen.